probably get going. Ready? Yeah, it's 12. Oh, can I just have a minute? No. Really? Yeah. Okay. You got okay? Right. Really? Yeah. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. Bye. <laughs> okay, so I'm off. I'm, I'm not gonna run the whole way. That'd be ridiculous. And I don't think I need to, because I'm gonna win easily this time, just like last time. So, I have an extremely convoluted journey today. It goes walk, bus, bus, tube, train, plane, bus, walk. I think I can hear him driving. <laughs> Katie, I love you very much, Aww. but I just want to say there's absolutely zero chance you're going to win this. Right, thanks. Enjoy the sweaty buses. Thank you. Bye. Love you. Bye. She does not, she genuinely does not stand a chance this time. And I feel a little bit sorry for her, but it is time I got my own back for that Paris challenge we did last year. I know I said I was gonna win this time, but I really actually think that Joel has the upper hand here. I mean, first of all, he's in an extremely fast car and public transport has never been on time or reliable. So I think I have a really tough job today. So last time we did something like this, Katie, my then girlfriend, now fiance and I, raced to Paris and she won. I was in a car as I am today and she was taking a plane as she also is. However, there was a few differences last time I had to drive on the Eurotunnel as I was going onto the continent, which is essentially public transport, and I had to rely on it. And also, with relying on that, it was sod's law that there was a car that broke down on my train as we were waiting to get off on the French side. Also, last time, Katie got a taxi to the airport, which sort of defeats the point of it. And so today, as I'm sure you're gonna be hearing, she has got a number of buses and trains to get her flight and it's going to be far more complicated and well I think much much fairer of a test between car and plane. I have made it to the bus stop I think <laughs> the first bus stop of the day although I just can't figure out which side of the road I'm supposed to be on oh no this is the right one so now I've just got to wait and I don't know how you know when a bus is gonna come. I don't know how to pay. I'm nervous and I'm anxious because I really wanna win. Right, well I should have a trick up my sleeve today because as we know, this challenge is all about speed and well, minimizing stops is one of those things. Now, although I do have the bladder of a toddler, as we all know, hopefully I'm not gonna have to stop for food. And the reason I think that is thanks to today's video sponsor, Y-Food. Y-Food are responsible then for these fantastic meal replacement drinks. They're not smoothies. They are literally drinkable meal substitutes. And crucially, can last for three to five hours. So I've brought two with me today. My favorite one actually being this one, which is the happy banana flavor. It's delicious. And genuinely, because of these, I shouldn't now have to stop for something substantial to eat. Now, truth be told, I only recently discovered Y Foods, but for someone like me that does a lot of long journeys, and today, one that involves a time element as well, Y Foods very fast becoming uh, a favorite of mine. There's plenty of flavors for you to choose from and a couple of sizes as well, 330 and 500 mil. These are the chunkier ones for today. And if you wanna get yourself a nice little discount, use the code that you can see on the screen now through the link in the description to get yourself some money off your order. Big thank you to Y Food for sponsoring this video. Not only are they facilitating it, but they're very much gonna help me in a practical manner today as well. Anyway, let's get past this van got a lot of miles to cover. I am in the middle of 
nowhere so I'm not particularly surprised by this but I have just sat down because the bus doesn't come for another half an hour I just read the board so I'm just sat here for half an hour and it feels really annoying because I know that Joel is already zooming off he's probably halfway to Edinburgh by now well of course I wasn't quite halfway but as we were already almost an hour into the race that meant I was about 50 miles closer to Edinburgh than Katie we were starting this race in the heart of beautiful Buckinghamshire and whilst for me that meant a straight jaunt up Britain's motorways to Edinburgh, for Katie it was somewhat of a convoluted route. Katie has to get herself all the way over to Stansted Airport which involves going all the way into London thanks to our somewhat interesting rail links here in England. And the reason for this is, well, the freedom of having a car means that I could just get up this morning, decide I wanted to drive to Edinburgh and do exactly that. However, I got up this morning, looked at Google Flights, and the only flight available was from Stansted. So that is the route and the flight that Katie has to take. I still have a monumental distance to cover though, around 320 miles and about six hours to do it, as Katie's itinerary, all being well, will get her to Edinburgh Castle at about half past seven. Under my right foot then, I've got a throttle pedal that gives me access to 620 PS, which is produced from that 5.2 litre V10 engine, naturally aspirated engine, let me just say, that's just behind my head. We have a 0 to 60 time of under three and a half seconds and a top speed of 204 miles per hour. Now, as we are saying within the UK today, we're not gonna be able to exceed 70, but I think it's on these back roads where we can make sure we're maximizing the speed we're doing. Got off the bus. I've never been more confused in my life. Google Maps closed whilst I was on the bus, and now the route that they suggested is not there anymore. I cannot find it. Apparently the route that I'm now supposed to take is going to take an extra half an hour which makes things a little bit sketchy getting to the airport at that time because the gate closes half an hour before the flight. I'm just already so stressed, so stressed. Obviously we're in this super fast car that can do 204 miles per hour, but you know, we can only do 70 legally in the UK. So you might say, well, what's the point? Well, to be honest, even just maintaining 70 is quite difficult in this country during the middle of the day on a Thursday. Um, so I cannot wait for the M6 toll because we'll be able to just maintain a constant good speed for the entirety of it. And actually what tends to happen is when you get above Manchester, which doesn't come too long after the M6 toll road, then the roads seem to clear out a bit, which is fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that, but oh my goodness, so far on the M1 and the M6, ugh. It's just really tiring actually, because you're having to keep your attention span, you know, really up. But our Google Maps is saying an estimated arrival of 18.51, five hours and 26 minutes from now. So according to that, we are making really good progress. I, I genuinely I haven't spoken to Katie either yet, so I have no idea how she's doing. I think she said that she had to like go into London or something to get to Stansted. So, I wonder where she is, but one thing's for sure, I'm a lot closer to Edinburgh Castle now than she will be. Oh, this is my bus, I think. I don't know how you know. Hiya, I'm just going to Luton Station. Um, it does, but the aid's quicker and cheaper. Okay, thank you, thank you. No, it was the wrong bus. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at this. She has inserted a card. In the card, read a slot below. That's how we accelerate away from the toll as quickly as possible. I am going to Luton Station. And now we're driving into what appears to be a traffic jam. Oh look, tunnel. <laughs> We're just coming up to that part of the country now where we're gonna pass Manchester and eventually then Blackpool. And once we get past there, 
the only other traffic I would expect at that point is potentially going into Edinburgh itself. And then there's the other small task of working out where I'm actually going to leave the car, because as far as I would, would guess, I won't be able to drive this right up to the castle. At least I don't think so. But at the moment, we're doing everything we can to try and make up time whilst we can. Okay, I'm off that bus. I now have 10 minutes to get on a train into central London so I can then get on the Stansted Express. It's just so stressful. It's not a fun time, not at all. And it's very sweaty. <laughs> Can I also just point out that our consumption since we left has been 23 miles per gallon, that's an average speed of 63 miles an hour. Right now we're doing 70, going slightly uphill and averaging 30. Just had a nod of approval from that guy there. People do like this car, it gets a lot of attention. As you would have seen the spec, uh, it's in Kimura grey, but I don't know what it will look like on camera. It comes out as quite blue in person with a, a lovely sort of pinky metallic fleck in it. Then we've got matching stitching on the inside over these red leather seats and then gold wheels. So all in all, it creates this very bright in your face spec. And actually, I would say Audi R8s can somewhat slip under the radar in comparison to a Lamborghini Huracan or a Ferrari F8 Tributo, for example. But actually, if I was to buy one of these, it would be in a spec like this that does stand out it just gives it a little bit more wow factor. But as I've said before and I'll say again, the V10 that powers this car is the only wow factor you'll ever need. It's absolutely stunning. How is it going? How are you getting on? Uh, how are you getting on? I want to hear you first. <laughs> so I'm on the bus, <laughs> the final bus before the airport. Okay, so you're not at the airport yet? No, and I'm going to get there at more like four than three, obviously, because it's already three. Yeah. So it's cutting it a bit fine. Okay. So I should make the flight. Are you having fun? No. I'm just like, it's just so stressful and there's been so many different things I have to like catch and get and I just don't know at all where I'm going and also majorly the, the big problem is that I'm stupid so so you as far as you're concerned you're gonna get the flight at five yeah and that's that'll be that yeah and then it's 45 minutes on the other side my maps are saying that I'm gonna arrive at seven seven yeah Oh no, you're going to be by like 15 minutes. So it's going to be quite close, I think. The thing is, I might be going past Manchester now, but as soon as you get on that plane, you're going to be yeah. going 500 miles an hour and you'll be yeah. in Edinburgh in about, well, 50 minutes of flight time. This is so funny. This is like a repeat of the Paris race all over again because I mean, this time, I feel quite confident that we've got this in the bag because if things continue as they are, we should arrive, as Katie just said, about 15 minutes, one five minutes before. However, this is not on my sat-nav. We're just coming into traffic. We're down to 20 miles an hour. And so this could happen, which is gonna severely hinder my estimated arrival time. He's gonna win. And at this point, that makes me very upset. 
because it feels like this whole journey is for nothing but if the flight does get in early which often they do it happened in the paris race it could happen now and there's an earlier bus or a train as joel mentioned i could have a look now plan ahead that would be a good thing to do and i might be able to make it there before him and he'll be so surprised so let's give it a go Scotland precisely about half an hour ago, which was about 10 past five, which is exactly when Katie's flight was supposed to have left. Now I need to check the tracking to see whether she has left on time because I don't actually know at the moment. Unfortunately, with an ETA of now 10 past seven, I'm also gonna to need to stop for some fuel. We've only got 75 miles of range left and 65 miles to go, so that doesn't fill me with the most confidence. So now that we're gonna fill up and stop, forget efficiency and just, we're gonna optimize speed now for the remainder of this journey because I'm a little bit nervous that if Katie has taken off on time about half an hour ago, she'll be landing in, well, about another half an hour. And that gives her a full hour then to get into town and it should only take 45 minutes so honestly for the first time on this race on this challenge for the first time I'm feeling the pressure now maybe I was a little bit too relaxed earlier on but I don't think I would have changed anything I've done so far but I am now feeling the pressure took off at 17.25, so basically on time, and she's already commencing our descent into Edinburgh. She's arriving in 25 minutes. We need to get a move on. Oh, for goodness, this is actually quite bad now. She's landing at 18.23. I need the sat-nav. Where's the sat-nav gone? Oh, it wants, to go, it wants me to go right. My arrival time is 19.24. She's landing at 18.23. So she's basically got a full hour to get into town. But that's not taken into account the fact that I've got to, I've got to park somewhere. I don't think I can just dump it outside the castle. I can't believe that she, she took off 25 minutes ago and she's flying over the Lake District, which we, well, it took us about five hours to get to the Lake District. That is the problem with these airplanes, is that once you're on them, yeah, you can't beat them. So, right, national speed limit, let's drop it down a few pegs. If the roads are like this all the way now, then we stand a really good chance of making up some time. I'm just gonna find the tram, get on it, and get to the castle as quickly as I can, but 
Normally I get pretty lost at this point. This is what should happen everywhere. There's the biggest sign saying trams to city centre. Thank you, Edinburgh. Half an hour to go. I'm wondering when that big city and that castle is going to come into view. Hopefully not too long. I didn't think it would be this close. I actually genuinely didn't think this, this would be this close. I've just had a text from Katie, hang on. Katie sent a new message. How far away are you? Would you like to reply? No. That's everything. I'm not going to reply because I'm just going to call her. Hello? Hello. Hi, hi. Hi. Where are you? Hi. I'm on the tram. You're on your way into town now? Yeah, I'm on the tram on the way in. You're joking. Well, the, the tram leaves in a few minutes, I think like five minutes, and then it's half an hour and then it's another ten minute walk. <laughs> right, well, I guess I'll see you soon. Yeah, okay. Well, I hope you find nowhere to park. Well, I hope you get lost. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> See you later. Bye. 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 We're only 1.9 miles away now, but it's saying it's going to take. 12 minutes. It's just like being in Paris all over again, this. It's five minutes past seven, and Katie should be there at about quarter past. And I'm trying to see 1.7 miles away, but it's saying it's going to take 11 minutes. My stress levels have gone from here to very quickly. That is the castle. That's Edinburgh Castle, isn't it? That is Edinburgh Castle. Please, God, give me a clear run. Give me a clear run. Yes, 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 yes. And the crazy thing is we just passed the turn off at Edinburgh Airport, so Katie could literally be anywhere. 0.4 miles. Katie said she had a 10 minute walk. This is probably about a 10 minute walk radius now. I'm genuinely shaking. Why is this red light taking so long? There's no one here. <sighs> green. Green, 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 green. We're 900 feet away. Sat at a red light. I can't see Katie anywhere. Can I drive up there? He's going up there. Okay, f it. I'm going up there. I'm going up there, I'm going up there, I'm going up there, I'm going up there. I mean, I'm at the castle. Where's the entrance? Well, that's the car. And that's Edinburgh Castle as far as I'm concerned, so... Is this Edinburgh Castle? Is this Edinburgh Castle? Yeah. Is this, is it closed? It's open in the morning, half past nine, and probably a bit half ten or six o'clock. So this is the entrance? This is the only entrance, yeah. Perfect, thank you so much. I've won. I've won. Katie's not here. Batman said, this is the entrance to the castle and, well, Katie's not here, is she? It's closed now, but I've won. Let me just call her. Oh my God. I think I've won. I've won. Yeah, you me? Where are you? Where? Yeah. I'm still on the tram. I'm here. <laughs> Yes! No. I've just I pulled up. You were say you were. I've like gone up uh, like a closed road 
because I think the castle is closed. I said to the man, is this the entrance? And he says, yes. So I'm here. Ping me your location when you get off and I'll pick you up, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, I will do. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm 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 She's gonna send me her location. Let's go and pick her up. Here she is. <laughs> oh no, I can see how smug he looks. <laughs> he looks so smug. <laughs> that would have been a nice walk up the hill for you. Yeah, well, it wasn't far away. Oh. Well, there we have it then. After an absolutely epic adventure and super long day for both of us, the Audi R8, the car, and I won the race to Edinburgh Castle. I was honestly completely ecstatic about this as for the last hour of that adventure and that race, I genuinely thought I might have lost. Big shout out to Katie for being such a good sport. And do let me know if you want to see more of these videos in the future. Where should we race to next? Thank you all so much for watching this video and I will see you all very, very soon.